Yo, 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 yo. Check dig, you dig. Hey, it's KB here uh, with another video, um, aka Ryan. So, uh, last video was step five. It was short. I told everyone that uh, step six and seven, we would go in depth. So we're going to go to the book on this. And uh, step six and seven, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what they are. Step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character. Okay. So key word there, entirely Entirely ready. That means we're completely ready to re reveal our defects of character. Excuse me, why I search for something. Um, and so, seven is humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings. Shortcomings. The times when we're going to come up short. Why? Because we're human and we're going to come up short. We're going to fall short. To the glory of God. We all do, right? Okay, so, without further ado, let's get back to it. You know, I'm a little angry right now. So, so I'm going to be silly because, you know, I don't know. It just helps me. So let's go to the book. If you have the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, it's on page 75. And, uh, so, this is just before we're going to work at 6 and 7, okay? So, once we have taken this step, it's talking about step 5. Once we've taken step 5, withholding nothing back, we are delighted. We feel good. We got all that garbage out of us. We can look the world in the eye now, because now the world knows, at least one person does, God knows, I told one person that might lead to the, that might lead me to the the fact that I don't have to be afraid anymore maybe to share my feelings and that I can in my defects and and when I uh, when I come up short or when I feel some kind of way you know this has kind of softened us to the rest of the world where we can finally breathe and feel good about ourselves that we've gotten that stuff out of us that we were uh, that we had bottled up for so long and so now it might make it easier in the future for us to share the things that are that are bother, bothering us bothering us in the future um, early on as opposed to stuffing it inside and letting it turn into something that might get us drunk or high we can be alone at perfect peace now and ease so true we can be uh we can we can we can rest assured that we finally told someone everything and they didn't judge us you know they 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 took it in and and there's some ease that comes with that and you know, it's therapeutic. It feels good. Someone knows my deepest, darkest secrets now. Not just God and me. And and so, you know, you have that relief. Our fears fall from us. We begin to feel the nearness of our Creator. So again, excuse me. So again, you know, as we take this process of the steps, we get closer to the Spirit of God. We start to develop a relationship with our Creator, God. And, you know, God's Word tells us a lot of things, one of which, and I'll repeat again, I've repeated it many times in, in, uh, throughout my videos, and, and it's scripture in the book of James. It says, confess our sins to each other so we can be healed. So even the Bible finds therapeutic value in sharing our wrongs, our sins, to another human being. 
we may have had certain spiritual beliefs, but now we begin to have a spiritual experience. Something is going on inside. You get that good feeling when you've accomplished something, when you've gotten something out of you that you needed to get out of you, maybe for years. And so instead of just believing in God, now you've experienced that spiritual uh, experience. <laughs> And, and, you, and you start to have an awareness about your spirit. The feeling that the drink problem has disappeared or the drug problem will often come strongly. You know, for me, it wasn't that white lightning experience. It was over time that desire just left me. Now, I wouldn't say we're cured of our disease because if we ever pick up again, then it spirals out of control and we come, become completely powerless over it again. So the disease will never leave us, okay? And maybe those thoughts of using will never leave us, but the desire to put them into action leaves us. We feel we are on the broad highway, walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe, God, spirit of God. In the universe. Returning home. Okay, this is after you've done your <clears throat> step five with someone you can confide in, sponsor. Returning home, we find a place where we can be quiet, at peace with God for an hour or so, carefully reviewing what we have done. What have we done? We just released our fears to another human being. We talked about our resentments. And how they affected us. We talked about the harm we've done, done to people. And institutions. And, and we talked about the role we played in it. And how selfish we were. And, and so. Uh, you know. We got a chance to review that. Why we were writing our inventory. We got a chance again to share it. And receive any feedback that the person had uh, that received our inventory. We thank God from the bottom of our heart that we know Him better. Why do we know Him better because of this process? Why do we know Him better because of this process? Because God wants us to come to Him. Like we are his children. And ask for forgiveness and repent and try to change. So, you know, God was probably aware that you were going to do your inventory and share it with a person way before you ever knew it. However, he's still proud that you did it. So, <clears throat> like a proud father that's proud of his daughter or son, um, it... it it naturally draws them closer to each other. And so now, again, you're going to feel at ease with coming to your Father in prayer. And what is prayer? Conversation with a higher power. Conversation with something you can't see. Conversation with God. Plain and simple. <clears throat> you, can talk about, you can talk about anything when you're talking to God. Taking this book down from our shelf, we turn to the page which contains the 12 steps. This is in how it works, the first page of the chapter. Carefully reading the first five proposals, we ask, we ask if we have omitted anything, if we have held back anything. For we are building an ark through which we shall walk a free man at last. So we're going to go there. So go with me if you have the book to uh, page 50, 58, we're going to read um, just before the suggestions to the program of recovery in the first five proposals or steps. So this is how it works, page 58, chapter 5 of the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> and it says, rarely have, we pushed, sorry, rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. Those who do not recover are people who cannot or will not 
give themselves to this simple program. So rarely have they seen people fail that thoroughly follow the path. And so what it looks like to not be thorough is to not read, not um, get someone to help you understand the steps, to not work each step thoroughly, um, and to you know quit in the middle of the process, um, not doing inventory. Um, you know that's not thoroughly working the program. So uh, you want to follow this thoroughly from the start. And it says, those that do not recover are people who cannot or will not com completely give themselves to this simple program. Usually men and women who are constitutionally incapable of being honest with themselves. You know, you got to be honest with yourself first that you have a problem and that it has become an addiction or alcoholism and that you become powerless when you put one in you. That's, that's where the honesty starts in the program. Is just admitting you have a problem that you need help. There are, there are such unfortunates. They are not at fault. They seem to have been born that way. They are naturally incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which demands rigorous honesty. Those are the ones that might not recover are the ones that just can't wrap their heads around being honest with themselves first, let alone the rest of the world. Their chances are less than average. There are those, too, who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders, but many of them do recover if they have, again, the capacity to be honest. So, you know, I know drugs do a number on your brain. They've done a number on mine. And, and so even though we have those mental disorders or those emotional things that, or those traumatic events that have happened in our life, um... You know, we, we still have the capability and the capacity to recover from this disease of addiction, alcoholism. We have the capacity to recover. To recover. Our stories disclose in a general way what we used to be like, what happened, and what we are like now. So our stories disclose in a general way. Meaning, there's more similarities about us than there are differences. So don't find yourself trying to separate yourself from the group of addicts or alcoholics. You will find non-addicts and non-alcoholics or churchgoers or whatever. There's, you know, all kinds of people that will say this to you. Don't call yourself an addict. You don't have to own that. God can heal you. Jesus can heal you. Yes, he can heal you. Absolutely. The reason we call ourselves Hey, I'm so-and-so, and I'm an addict. Hey, I'm so-and-so, and I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic slash addict. And so the next person feels like they belong, not to a group that is labeled addicts or alcoholics, but to people, humans, that have the same problem as them. It's our way of introducing ourselves and saying, hey, I struggle with the same thing. We're not out in public announcing, hey, I'm, a, I'm an addict. It's only when we come across or have the opportunity to carry the message or to reveal to someone that's struggling with it too. So that's why we call ourselves an addict or an alcoholic that's in recovery. We're not labeling ourselves. We're not putting ourselves down. We're trying to get the next person to, to see that you're not alone. So again, don't separate yourself from the group. Um, there's more similarities. You know, you'll find yourself, I'm, I'm a different kind of addict. I'm a different alcoholic. I'm not like them. I guarantee you there's someone in, in one of those meetings or in the fellowships that is like you and has a similar story. You're just not doing yourself a favor and being open-minded enough to hear it and listen and find it because it's there. And trust me, there's more similarities than there is differences in us. So when it says what we used to be like, what happened, and what we are like now, 
is what it was like when we were getting high or drunk, okay? What happened that got us sober? Were we for, forced to get sober and we just happened to fall in love with recovery? Um, did, did, did we voluntarily get help? You know, what happened that made us want to recover? And what it's like now that it's so now now that we're sober and we're in recovery. What is it like now? I'm sure it's beautiful. If you have decided you want what we have and are willing to go to any length to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. If you're going to only if you're going only if you're willing to go to any length to get it. Meaning, willingness first key unlocks the door to honesty. Honest with yourself. Remember, rarely have we seen a person fail us thoroughly follow this program. Those that do not recover are the ones that are incapable of being honest with themselves. Three, open-mindedness. What does that mean? It means that I have the willingness to and listen to suggestions. Listen to suggestions of people that have recovered. That's what open-mindedness means when they're talking about those three key principles. But willingness has to come first before the other two. At some of these we balked. We hesitated. At some of these steps we balked. We hesitated. We thought we could find an easier, softer way. Easier, softer way. I tried to just go to meetings. I tried to just um, go to church. I tried to get in this relationship with a sober person. Uh, with a normal person. Um, I tried to get this new job. I tried to move out of state. I tried to run from my disease. None of these things work. Those were the easier, softer ways. <clears throat> but we could not. With all the earnest, earnestness at our command, meaning all we, I mean, we had the desire to recover. We wanted a different life. We beg of you to be, or they're talking about themselves when they're giving these suggestions of the earnestness. You know, they want you to recover. We beg of you to be fearless and thorough from the very start. Some of us have tried to hold on to our old ideas and the result was nil until we let go absolutely. Those old ideas I just talked about of trying different ways to recover. When the way to recover is to rely on something greater than yourself, excuse me, and, uh, and confess, you know, your wrongdoings. Try to clean them up the most, uh, uh, the best way you can. And, and, and that's what the amends process is about. And, and having that relationship with God when no one else is there is, is the sole purpose. If you want to put one purpose on the 12 steps, it is to get you to have a relationship with God. And so, again, it's therapeutic to admit it, to believe, to turn it over to God every day, to do a house cleaning, to confess it to someone else, to talk with God regular, to make an amends list to uh, start to make those amends, and then to <clears throat> maintenance your spirit every day. Talk to God. When you're wrong in the moment, admit it. When you own an apology, give it. Um, and when you've had that spiritual awakening and someone comes along and needs your help, you're able to carry the message to them. Remember that we deal with alcohol or drugs, Cunning, baffling, powerful. Without help, it is too much for us. We can't do it alone. But there is one who has all power. That one is God. May you find him now. Exclamation point. Half measures avail us nothing. We're not half-stepping. We're not lukewarm. We're not one foot in, one foot out. We're all in. We ask this protection and care with complete abandon. We let go of the wheel. Matter of fact, we got in a trunk. We don't even want to see where this thing is going because we want to have that much faith that God will deliver us from this disease and that we can recover and the desire will leave us. Here are the steps we took which are suggested as a program of recovery. Not twisting anyone's arm. These are suggestions. But it has worked for millions across the globe more effective than anything else in addicts and alcoholics are the 12 steps, bar none, more effective than anything else, including your prescription meds, your, your shots that wing you off of certain drugs. Those are fine. 
as long as you don't rely upon them for years and and use it as a crutch. Okay, I understand the physical parts of some detoxing <clears throat> uh, methods coming off of uh, certain drugs. It, it's needed if you want it to be soft and, and not painful, you know. And, and I totally understand. I would do the same thing, you know, if my, if my addiction was opiates or heroin or alcohol where I needed that detox process and, and maybe some medication. Absolutely, I would take that. Okay, so one, we're going to go over these, these five principles. Sorry, these five proposals. This is what it says. It says, take down the book after you've done your step five. Take down the book and read the first five proposals, the first five steps. And have we thoroughly done them? Have we held back anything? One, we admit it. We were powerless over alcohol that our lives have become unmanageable. Got to get this one in 100% right. This means, I'll give you an example. I'm walking into the gas station. My old drug dealer's coming out. And he says, man, oh, I haven't seen you. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. My number's still the same. Um, you know, matter of fact, I got some with me. In that moment, that's when that switch needs to go on. Bloop. And you need a brand new light bulb in there. It, it needs to be ready. Okay. That 100% for sure, I can't pick up. I'm an addict. Something physically takes place in me that doesn't take place in, in a social drinker or social drug user. And, and I want more and more and more. And I won't stop. And it might end in the grave this time. So that's what admitting you're powerless is. And that's getting it 100% right. Every time those moments present themselves, or maybe thoughts, that you turn that switch on that says, nope, I'm powerless if I choose to make that decision. And don't get down on yourself if you, if you relapse, okay? It's a part of a lot of people's stories. It doesn't have to be, but it is. It's part of a large percentage of our stories, including myself. It's... It, what matters is you get back up and you go talk about it and you don't keep it and isolate like I've done. Two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Have I come to believe? Have I surrendered? Have I humbled myself and admitted that... Um, that it's a power greater than myself, God... And only God that can restore me to sanity, to soundness of mind. And what's the opposite? Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. The book describes it as keep putting your hand on the hot flame and not taking it off of it, not recoiling from the flame. Just keeping it on there, knowing it's going to burn the crap out of you. And, and we hold our hand there anyway. And that's, that's a good analogy to what we do on drugs or alcohol. We go to that bar for that drink. We go to the dope man for that dope, knowing the outcome already, that this is going to spiral out of control. I'm going to drink to get drunk, pass out, black out. I'm going to use dope till I'm broke, till I'm homeless, maybe till I overdose. Maybe I lose my children. All these things happen to us. And, and it's sad, but we keep doing it. That's insanity. So what has the power to restore that? God, and only God. Three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. As we understood Him, wherever we are with our relationship with God, He'll meet us there. If we don't quite believe, our faith is small. Um, and... Or we, we feel like God has wronged us. Um, some, some things weren't fair in our lives growing up or whatnot. Or, or we once had a relationship with God and we just turned away because we're ashamed. You know, whatever the case may be, He's going to meet you there. And so, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. That we're at step three. 
um, this is your daily action step, your first step to action. Uh, you're making a decision every day to turn it completely over to God. Okay, have we done that? Can we say that we've thoroughly done that? If we can, moving on to step four. Remember, we're reading the first five proposals that were suggested us suggested to us, the first five steps, so we can move on. <clears throat> Made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Was it searching? Was it fearless? Did we hold anything back? Ask yourself that question. Yep. Okay, moving forward. Five, admit it to God, to ourselves, and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. Have we done that? Yeah, we just did it. Okay, let's move on. So we're going to go back to <clears throat> when we return home. We just carefully read the first five proposals. We asked ourselves, have we admitted anything? Hopefully no. For we are built, building an ark through which we shall walk a free man at last. Is our work salad so far? That's where that honesty with yourself has to come in. You know, be honest with yourself. Have I been thorough? Have I holding, held anything back? Am I half-stepping? <clears throat> Have we skipped on the cement put into the foundation? What is this cement put into the foundation? I would say honesty. 